Hello guys, hope you're doing really well. Village55 back with another video. Again, we're going to be doing some ETS2 today. Um, was planning to record this last night, but conversation got too weird because I was running on like, I hadn't slept for like 18 hours. Um, that being said, um, we are currently in Joensu in Finland, and I believe we're going uh, to... Okay, no, that's completely off. I thought we were going down to Pori. No, we're going to Arla near... Oh, no. Uh, right, that's either Pori or Tampa, that Arla place. I'm going to have a guess it's Pori, but yeah, whatever. Um, a couple of quick things to... Yeah, it's Pori. Okay, so uh, real quickly, I'm just going to get into the game, uh, what we're running in-game. We are in a Volvo 750 horsepower running a HCT trailer um, finish spec. Uh, cargo is wooden beams, 44 tons. Now I've added a bit of a challenge here, guys, um, because on my G27 I don't have an SKS, SKRS, or whatever it's called. I don't have one of those <coughs> truck shifters yet. I'm planning to. Not sure when I'll get it, but it'd be nice to have. So uh, I'm using a six-speed manual transmission in this Volvo, which will be uh, quite demanding. Um, but we'll see how that goes um, also guys just to let you know the um, in a couple of updates I've actually now joined the GTA 5 online community that community being San Andreas's finest I'm currently a CP there which is a CIV probationer but I'm just as you can see in the top left talking to a couple of them uh, online so I'm going to hop back into the chat Start this truck up and uh, make our make our way to Pori. All right, guys, I'm back. Calculating route. Cool, don't all jump at once, hey? Oh yeah, that's true actually. Ripley's probably gone shopping. Don't know where Moore is. Moss has muted himself and Blue's just been AFK for ages now. Oh, welcome back, Moss. Thank you. Oh, Ripley, you back as well now. <laughs> Haven't even left yet. Oh, right. Now waiting on my partner who's dealing with a friend that's getting a little uppity over meds. Oh, yay. Oh my god. Oh, and oh, I, okay. I just completely can jackknifed. Can someone explain the logic behind this? Behind what? <laughs> Russia's floating nuclear power plant. I guarantee you they basically just designed a sub that somehow won't sink. Christ. In Guys, yards, what? Turn right. Krell's in the hospital. In what? Yards, Why? Turn right. He had a seizure. Oh shit. Looking at artwork. Uh, I will later. I don't want to do it while I'm recording on YouTube. Oh Jesus, is he okay? Let me see if I can make any sense. Oh no, I think I've just, I think I've just beached my Volvo. How the hell has the trailer gotten stuck there? Raise all the axles, see if I can get some traction to pull this through. I mean, let's be honest, the Russians do not have a very good track record of nuclear plants. No. Oh. I need to change one of my trailer nuts. Wheel nuts. Right, so I'm slowly inching forwards, but for some reason I am stuck on something. Oh. 
Oh, and one. Oh, that's what I was stuck on. Alright. That's how I managed to beach the trailer on a um, bit of dead ground. Well, that's our first challenge out of the way with a six speed transmission. Bearing in mind we're like forty four ton payload. Yeah. So it's yeah. That's gonna be fun. Let me just check crawls alright. I'm out guys, Kroll's alright but he doesn't know whether he's going to be admitted or not but I've told him to keep me informed and I'll keep you guys informed Alright, in cheers yards, Rope turn right. I'll be back in about 45 minutes I thought you said uh, Aldi was only down the street yards, turn right. <laughs> We shop oh. slow alright Either that or you shop half the shop Well we are going to go get a buku lot of pop tarts so Oh my god <laughs> Jesus Christ Alright, uh... Alright, let's see if we can get this bitch out. What the hell was that? Something just went crunch. Oh well, we're out. That's the main thing. Oh god, this is gonna be fun. Later's rope. <coughs> See you in a bit. <clears throat> oh, this is gonna take four bloody ever. It's only a seven hour, seven and a half hour journey, but yeah, in a six speed transmission, this thing takes ages to get up to speed. And it's a manual, so the gear, like the gear changes aren't gonna be too fluid either. I mean, yeah. I can't, I won't even be able to keep the revs in the green band because obviously you're going to need all the revs for the momentum to get up hills and such the like so there's really going to be don't. times where I, yeah there's going to be times where I'm revving the nuts off of this thing and there goes boys say again no oh. you just left yeah bye then bitch in 100 yards turn right In 50 yards, turn right. Oh god. You know what's really kind of annoying, Shield? What's that? So, obviously, you're obviously aware in the US you can carry a firearm. Over, right. But over in the UK, mainland, you can't because of uh -huh. the 1987 gun ban. And yeah. And on anything over 22 caliber center fire. Yeah. Semi or mic. I recently learned that does not apply to the Alaman, the Vulcans, or, the Gib or Gibraltar. I'm moving to either Gibraltar or the Isle of Man then. <laughs> Plus they've got the Isle of Man TT there, so sweet. Oh yeah. Well if you're wanting a phone company that you can get signal and actually use your phone on the Isle of Man, O2's the way to go. 
I oh, I'm, al I'm already with O2. They they are oh, fantastic for coverage, actually. They really are. Yeah. You you've probably heard of the if you've ever been in Lanx and Merseyside area, town of no, Southport. No. Yes, I've Coast. I've delivered there. I've delivered there. Shit, you've probably delivered less than seven miles from where I live. <laughs> Brilliant. I've done Ellesmere Port, Tyne Port, um, all, like, all, well, I say all, most major ABP ports. Well, all major ABP ports, but not all ABP ports. Um, yeah, I'll, I've delivered it to a fair few places, mate. But yeah, there's a, a little, I guess you call it village, dip called Westhead, in between Holmescook and Skem. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. My my family can never get any fucking signal there. I can. <laughs> really? Bloody hell. Yeah. And it's just like, uh, that was EE, -E, um, keep saying to him, fucking change to O2. Mm. It is much better. <laughs> Yeah, the one thing I've found is O2 do tend to be quite sneaky with how they like ramp up the prices on the contract. So you've always got to challenge them, and they do. The thing is, every time I've challenged them, they have come back down on it though. Um, so it's like contract yeah, number three worth of worth a wank because I'm on um, page go. No, that's all right then. This is the thing, I remember when I was a kid and I had a pay-as-you-go phone, I was like, I really want a contract, and now I'm on a contract, I'm like, fuck it, I need to go back to pay-as-you-go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's honestly just so much better. Yeah, it really is. But the thing is, is that my contract with O2 is I get a loyalty bonus, so I've just got this new iPhone XR, or well, I say new, it's fairly old now, in relation to new technology coming out. I think the iPhone 11's coming out at some point. It's got like three cameras yeah. in it and stuff like this. Just like, what the fuck? Um, but I'm, I will probably still... audio jack. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, wait, does it have the audio jack back? I don't think so. Yeah, well, in which case, definitely not getting it. But it's just like, I may just keep this XR. I'm actually even debating going back to my iPhone 6 because, honestly... One, I miss the audio jack, but two, the iPhone XR is all I'll really ever need. Now. I've had the same phone for about four years now. Yeah. Samsung Galaxy J3. Yeah. It's yeah. never let me down. Ever. Yeah. It's like, this is the thing um, as well, because it's like. I say, oh, I'll probably stick with this phone forever, and I was like, well, I said that before I got the XR, but I'll tell you what, the XR is genuinely, it's so easy, because all you do is just look at it, and then swipe up, and boom, that's your phone unlocked. It's just yeah, like, it's how can, how can you, mine. yeah, it's like, how can you argue against that? Really, though. Yeah. It's just brilliant. Don't mind me asking, what was the first vehicle you ever drove? What? Is it my first car? Like, the first vehicle you got to drive? Uh, whatever, before even learning to drive yeah. and stuff. Uh, first car, it was a car. First car I ever drove was a Rover 620 Li or something like that. Not bad. Not, not, yeah. too, not too bad. My dad, my dad bought it at an auction, and it had the number plate L thirty seven O R A. So it subsequently and affectionately got named uh, Laura. Fair enough. But uh, yeah, that was a good. The Rovers were actually quite good cars then. But then my dad became a uh, BMW fan after that. Yeah. He, he's literally had BMW ever since. Well, this is the thing. I don't. I quite like BMWs as well. They are good cars. They've got more computers in a BMW 525 E39 than they did in Apollo 13. Straight facts. So yeah. Yeah. I'll be going to the moon next time in a in a BMW rather than Apollo. Thanks. <laughs> but, I mean, um, I personally drive a 
focus now, but it's honestly yeah. just comfortable. It's comfortable enough for what I need. Yeah, Ford have ramped up their game a lot, in actually, yards, in terms of their cars. Yeah, I've got a... I think I remember telling you about it. Was a, It's a 63 plate Ford Focus Titanium. Yeah, oh god, I'm having to feather this clutch so badly at the minute. But I will tell you now, you're going to be jealous of why I'm going to tell you why I got to drive first before learning to drive. Why? What did you get? Learn to drive. I went to a track day in Three Sisters, Wigan. Oh yeah. Got the first car I got behind the wheel of was a Lamborghini Gallardo LP560-4. Not bad. Not bad at all. And I had the thing doing 70 mile an hour on Three Sisters. <laughs> Huh. Is that it? Well, Three Sisters is uh, meant to be a go-kart track. <laughs> yeah, no, fair enough. But that being said, you can get go-karts up to 70 miles an hour at Three Sisters, if I'm not mistaken. Some of them, yeah, and some of them not so much. Yeah. No, my f um, one of my friends, she got me a uh, track day pass for my birthday. Um, and I went... I was still living down at Kent on. at the time, and I went all the way up to Blythe Park for this. Um, and I got to drive a Nissan GTR 35, which is like my dream car, and also a Chevrolet Camaro ZL1 when the first ZL1 ever came out. And I'll tell you what, like GTR 35, still my dream car, but the ZL1, in terms of like supercars as such, is is a strong second. I'll tell you. Honestly, like, yeah, okay, Mustangs and Challengers, they sound good, they look good and all that, but oh my god, the Camaro, oh god, the Camaro was genuinely something else. It really was, I can't quite describe how cool it was. At the roundabout, take the first exit. Uh, yeah, Chevrolet, some of the Chevrolets are pretty good cars. Exit yeah, now. I don't get why people are knocking... Chevrolets. They are genuinely awesome, awesome cars. You get the good with the bad, though. There are some that are absolute buckets of crap. Oh, yeah, but that comes with any car. You'll, like, get, um, you'll yeah, get cars I'm, that are I'm cursed about, and know, just like, constantly going wrong. Yeah, like, it's, a, it's an on, At the roundabout, on the, take uh, the second individual exit. case basis. Like, in my lifetime so far, I've owned four cars. Right. One, my first one was a '56 plate Fiesta. 1. Yeah. 2. Exit now. But after just passed my driver's test. Yep. That that turned for me perfectly fine. And then I got a 2010 1.6 Focus. I right. fucking loved it. It was a it was an absolute beauty. Yeah. And then it got written off by Roy, but basically just peeled it open like a fucking king. Tin can. Tin can, yeah. Yeah. And the copper that came out to it said, and bear in mind, I'd only been up driver's side at my door Keep right. 30 seconds and earlier. And then exit right. Yeah. If I'd been there, it would have bit me in half. Exit right. Oh, I'm not surprised. Like, this is the thing, though, as well. Like, continue straight on. My, um, my, to be fair, one time when, um, I got my sort of claim to fame in trucking as such was actually when I broke down. Um, I was driving a Renault T range back from, I think it was Hornsey, going towards Immingham to drop a trailer off at the port there. And um, basically, the night before, the truck had just been struggling going through the hills, and it turns out one of the um, fuel rail pressure sensors in the T range had gone. And it was just a cursed, it was genuinely, it was just a cursed truck. So it was a, oh, cheers mate. It was a cab tilt job in a lay-by that night when I had a call out come out once I'd parked up for the night. During that time I'd managed to walk into the bonnet that was open in pitch black and bust my nose open as well. So I already wasn't having a good night. Um, then the next morning I set off at half four in the morning for the port. I um, set off absolutely fine. But then, for some reason, I got up to ninth gear, kept going up to 12th, doing 56 along the dual carriageways. I'm slowing down for a roundabout, it's an auto gearbox, and the truck didn't want to go down below 9th. 
So I had to negotiate the truck at speed through around about ninth gear because it genuinely would not stop without me stalling it. Um, at which point, the next roundabout came up to, I had to manually try and override the gearbox, because you've got the manual setting as well. And even trying to knock it down, it was like, nope, 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 okay, I'll go to 8th then, and went to 8th. And I was like, oh, thank fuck, and I just kept knocking it down until I could make that roundabout safely. So, kept doing that sort of, similar sort of setup um, for the time I was trying to go to the port. Now, anyone who is watching this from Grimsby will probably remember it because when it came to about half past sorry no I set off about half past five got to Peaks Parkway at about half past six and um, I was like right I've got to try and phase this out because Peaks Parkway is essentially um, a single carriageway but two two lanes going either way or oh, sorry four lanes two one direction to the other direction um, but it's a series of traffic lights, so I'm trying to phase it so that I catch the green lights. First green light, I was like, yeah, brilliant. Second one, I've got a green light, and it changes to red. I'm like, you bastard. So I had to stop, forcing this truck to stop. I swear to God, it was the most jank thing I've ever heard and felt, because I'm trying to... This is the thing, I tried manually overriding it and knocking it down, and it wasn't having it this time. I just thought, crap, I've just got to stall this. Um... I ended up stalling the truck in ninth gear, where basically th you it, you got the vibrations, you're vibrating in the whole cab, the whole cab's shaking like a mother a trucker. Take the um, exit. And then it basically uh, farted on me and um, and uh, crashed out. So I'm like, oh, brilliant! I'm gonna fill up soon as we're only half exit a tanker. Um, so yeah. Finding um, alternate route. And the thing is, is then I couldn't start the truck back up. Because what had happened is yards, the truck had stalled in in um, ninth gear essentially, and um, when I tried at least turn the key to select into neutral, nothing was happening. I was like, "Brilliant! I'm actually stuck here." Um, <clears throat> got a recovery, got recovery folks out. They um, did their thing. Um, basically just sat behind me as we waited for a wrecker to come and tow me out. Um, but what we had to do was... Um, oh, I've got someone behind me. <laughs> um, what we had to do was um, essentially unscrew the half shaft from the drive axle and actually take it out of the... Um, take it out... Oh, Jesus. And actually take it out of the uh, axle... And in we had this sledgehammer, right. just sledgehammer whacking at this wheel with cars going past us. Um, in 50 yards, turn right. You know, cars going past us and keeping a very wide berth because we've got recovery operator slamming away on this uh, half shaft axle. And then, but the thing is, right, now this is the key thing, is that Peaks Parkway, Take the first exit. it is very, it's a key route into Grimsby. And because where I'd broken down Exit was essentially now. a filter lane off to the left of the junction, um, people were having to go around me, and it was just clogging up the lanes so badly. And I think to the point where um, I was causing a gridlock um, all the way back to the toll bar traffic lights, which are a good mile and a half, I think, back. If you've got that as Continue straight on. start stop bumper to bumper traffic, that is a uh, yeah, that's definitely something. So yeah, I ended up being in the Grimsby Telegraph for that. That wasn't one of my finest moments. <laughs> Absolutely hilarious. Keep to the right. You still there, Moss? Yeah, I'm still here. I was just oh, what did I bore you to death? <laughs> no, it was just <laughs> what you were saying. Yeah, no, no, that that was literally it. <laughs> Holy shit! Well, I will give you this, 
shield. You do have That's a good taste in cards for BR thirty five. Oh yeah. I think like I think there's a reason its nickname is Godzilla. <laughs> Put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> this is, is the it, thing, right? Didn't they use an R thirty five to um pull a uh, tablecloth off oh, well is there but be stuff on the table? Yeah. Like, top I, I, yeah, I believe there is a uh, thing for that. But Top Gear being Top Gear, they fucked it anyways. Didn't they have, um, what was his name? Stig do it. Because Clarkson's too fucking much of an idiot. Yeah, well, that's it. Uh, I can, ima I can imagine that, actually. They've half a mile an hour, and Richard will probably find a way to crash it. Yeah, that's true. May will probably just drag the table with him, because he's going too slow. Pretty much. Field, there we go. Actually, yeah, that's a point. Oop. Mm. Mm. Uh, let's see if we can increase our field. Oh, go on, other way. Yeah, there we go. Oh, that'll do. <clears throat> got it that I haven't got any of my amber flashing lights on in the photo, but hey ho. Uh, field of view's warping the image a bit there. There we go. Still a bit warped, but that'll do. That's the custom thumbnail done. <laughs> Yeah, I don't do YouTube, me. No. I haven't got the patience all the time. To be fair, it's like... Once you've got everything set up in place, it, it, it can become quite easy, but... I'm sort of in that phase where... I am working to try and keep ahead of the game in terms of content I'm pu pushing out, but at the minute, it's like all I'm really able to do is ETS2 and ATS. Uh, or not that it's... Uh, easy as such but it's just like other content will literally just be for fun as such like this is but um, most other games on like I don't have the right controllers for like Armour 3 is the only other thing I play but Armour 3 I've got so many mods installed that most of the servers kick me out <laughs> so I'm like ah brilliant Because of obviously, as soon as there was that uh, nuke mod that came in, it was just like, oh yeah, this is this is shit. Because people yeah. just kept people just kept um, kept on nuking servers and basically causing server crashes. So yeah. Yeah, that's that definitely sucked. Might go get something to eat in a minute. I'm starving. I'll finish this delivery off because I'm not far off now. Have something to eat and then resume normal YouTube traffic. Blue's gone AFK, so he's probably gone to sleep. Yeah, he's probably going to get a nap in before the patrol. Yeah. Hey. Oh yeah, this is the thing, my body clock is so screwed up at the minute, it's like, I keep forgetting, it's now half past four in the afternoon. Yeah, I wasn't even, I don't, I don't even know what time it is. I've okay. been trying to get my body clock back to one hour. Yeah? Yeah, because I'm, I'm looking at either later on in the year, well, next, you know, like, start of academic year, either going back to college. Yeah. To do other courses, or uh -huh. 
trying to go back into motor vehicle mechanics. Yeah. Because, I mean, I spent five fucking years doing it in college, so I may as well. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm just thinking, if I wait a year, or not even a year now, get mm -hmm. that Crown Victoria, which is my dream car, get done up as Las Vegas Metro, God, and then start doing that as a wedding and prom car business. That, yeah, not a bad shout. You'd be like the next, uh, what's it, US-UK cop car. Or whatever yeah, that guy is, he's got the CBPI with Broward County Sheriffs all over it. There's another one that's got Indian Shores. There's another one that's done Palm Beach. There's another one that's done um, Rex Car from Walking Dead. Uh huh. There's a couple of Dodge Chargers. Yeah, roaming about. <laughs> yeah. But for me, I've, I've always loved the aggressive roar of the V8. Yeah, not gonna lie, the Charger does do a good V8. That's the thing, CVPI V8, it's like, it. don't get me wrong, it sounds good, but it's like, people just say, oh, it sounds like so aggressive, it doesn't. It sounds like a fucking whale's mating call, I'm not gonna lie. It, you know, compared to a it Charger V8. Oh yeah, but compared to the Charger V, yeah, yeah, I'll give you that there. But compared to a ball, uh, to compared to a, like a near enough two liter V4, it sounds oh, a lot yeah. nicer. Oh yeah, straight up. And besides, I may as well. I've already got the siren box for light bars, and like most of the equipment I need. Yeah. Thing is, so you got to no dabble point. with the legality of it all. Turn left. Well, I've spoken to like a couple of traffic guys around where I live, and yeah, they're they're pretty chill about it. Yeah, yeah but it's one about of like road he's theory looking. and stuff. Well, as long as the lights aren't being used on road the theory, road, highway as code as, rather. Yeah. From what the traffic guy was saying, as long as it's not being used on the public road uh -huh. to, to impersonate, he doesn't give two shots. <laughs> yeah, well, rightly so. Um, but yeah, no, that's the thing. If I if I ever caught someone doing that on the road, I I would genuinely throw the book at them. Oh yeah, for sure. Because you never know what that person's fucking intention is. Yeah, it's worrying. Well, there's been cases in the United States where people have been raped and murdered. Yeah, well, this is the thing, like, um, there was one thing where someone was actually impersonating a traffic, an unmarked traffic cop along the M62 at one in point. In 100 yards, And turn West right. York, uh, oh God, West York said, if an unmarked vehicle now tries to stop you, don't stop. In 50 Ring yards, 999 so right. we... Oh god, slow down, slow down. Um, ring 999 so we can confirm it before, uh, for your safety, before anything, it, unless anything bad happens. Yeah, and I, I understand exactly where they're coming from with that. But mm. here's the thing with it being done up as Las Vegas, clearly black and white, it's very obvious not a British cop car. Very yeah, exactly. Obvious. All right, I've got to get this HCT trailer down another dirt track into Arla or Aria or whatever it's called. I think it's Aria actually. Yeah, it's Aria. What they want with all these wooden beams is beyond me. I don't know. They also want them for something. Yep. No, I'm gonna not gonna lie. The um, on one of my first episodes on my ETS2 playlist since I've come back, I was driving a Scania Longline, but I had when I was taking that Scania Longline, 
uh, down to Italy one time to a place called uh, Fui Spa in um, Rome and getting into it is an absolute pig um, even in a regular trailer like it is well it's not a pig it's just tight and what I've ended up having to do is with the long line I've got it on a 6x2 chassis with the tag axle lift and when the tag axle down it's a rear steer but then the trailer I've had to have it where the two rear axles of the trailer are rear steer as well so the trailer actually pivots on the front axle and it only with that I can actually get the trailer round effectively mm. uh, are you serious our customer expects delivery very soon make sure you arrive on time as I'm coming down the final path crying out loud you have reached your destination Alright, let's get you into here. Watch those pallets. Oh, um, Jill, one more thing I've just remembered about freight points that you may be interested in. Go on. So, if you say if you're wanting to use two weapons, but say use 556, five, uh -huh. you're going to run out of that ammo type a fuck ton quicker because both weapons will use that ammo. Yep. Not like it was in um, Wildlands where you could have like a 9mm SMG and a 9mm handgun. Yeah, yeah. N none of that. Uh huh. So, just thought you yeah, might be interested in knowing that you're gonna probably want to be, you know, keeping an eye on your ammo count. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. But if you play stealth, oh my god, you're sorted. Because yeah. each, each knife that they have in the game, yeah, and each different stance you do, has different takedown animation. Oh, really? Like, if you're detected with one of the, you know, serrated blades, you end up mm -hmm. stabbing them in the thigh, into the neck, and then ripping it from either the, from the left side, all the way round to the right. Starting route. Have a oh yes, so I've seen that headlock. animation. Yeah, that sounds pretty badass. I'm not gonna lie. And then there's one where you stab them, you know, just in between the um, collarbone and the neck. Yeah. Once and then stab them three very very quick times in succession. Yes. In the same general area. Yeah, because I got the um, wristband off of uh, Wildlands for that. Um, and that basically, you have a, that animation for the melee attack there as well, if you catch them by surprise. I'm thinking I might get into some Wildlands later on to uh, get some breakpoint hype going. Because I'm not going to lie, I really do want to get breakpoint now. Curse you, Breakpoint, for breaking my bank, of any, if anything. <laughs> I mean, it's called Breakpoint for a reason. <laughs> yeah. My... Yeah. There was a hidden message in the game title, guys. <laughs> yep. It's ridiculous how pricey games are getting these days, though. I remember when Simpsons Hit and Run was a fiver. Oh, yes, you're talking my language. Yeah, too right. That's Two, four, game. six, eight, you suck, I'm great, da 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 da, you I hate. <laughs> yep. Mate, that, that is a, honestly, Simpsons Hit and Run was a classic. Oh my god, yeah. I remember when I was a kid, I literally, as soon as I got to level five, all I did was run around in the police car. Yep. <laughs> Honestly. Or the fire truck as well. Yards, that was right. awesome. I'm actually very tempted to see if I can get um In fifty yards. See if I can right. get another uh version of Simpsons hit and run if it's still going strong. Which it probably isn't. It's probably dead as a doorpost by now, but uh yeah. Even still. Nice one, pal. To be fair, that was completely and utterly, totally my fault, but whatever. 
I just got impatient because no one was letting me out. Oops. Whoops, just realised I accidentally muted myself trying to look to the right. It's alright. Yeah, no, uh, I just literally like forced my way out, crashing into someone, and I was like, yeah, you're a dickhead for not seeing me in time because I got ammo flashing beacons, and then I was just like, well, actually, technically, that was completely and utterly my fault because I was the one that just pulled out on the poor bastard. Because <laughs> he's doing like 60 MPH towards me. This is the thing as well, it's like quite like running through Finland because okay yeah you get the added challenge of the um, HCT trailers but also it's like you've got the scenery that goes with it really well actually I, li I quite like the rural connections that Finland has You there, dude? Yeah. Mate, you just have these moments where you're just like, yep, going. Bravo 6, going dark. At the roundabout, <laughs> take the second yeah. exit. Something like that. No, I just stalled it. I was, going, I was going through the gears down, shifting too quickly, and then ended up stalling it because all of a sudden I went from fourth to third, and the um, truck didn't like third. So basically dropped anchor on myself, and then when I went into second, I'd already stalled because I was too low of a gear ratio Exit for now. the revs. When I went into second. Alright, I wonder how much tonnage this next load is going to be. One thing you will probably like about Breakpoint yep. compared to games like The Division, mm -hmm. when they, you know, have the enemies for like level 150 gear score, it doesn't matter about their gear score if you get them with a headshot. Yards. Headshot yeah, still yeah. a headshot yeah. and kills them. Yeah, that's the one thing I gotta say. Like, that's the one thing. Oh god. Oh Jesus Christ! I cannot get my controls right today. Um, yeah, that was the one thing that I was sort of just like, that needs to happen, because if it, oh god, like, if, genuinely, if headshots don't count anymore, then I'm just gonna, like, have a duck fit. Yeah, they, they still count, they're still as lethal, but it's one of those, if the enemy becomes alerted, then You're they do turn into a bit of a bullet sponge if you're getting body shots. Yeah. They do have... Fair. The same but that's the thing. I can I can armor. understand. Yeah, I can understand that if they're toting heavy armor as such. But other than that, no. Headshot should be a headshot. End of story. Regardless of whether they're alerted or not. Yeah, there's only one case, one, one enemy type that will not die with one headshot, and that's the yeah, it's guy a juggernaut, the, isn't it? The, yeah, the juggernauts. But you can still kill them, even with two headshots with a rifle. Yeah. Or one entire mag of 5.56. Five, yeah. And it will still take their helmet off, and then it's basically a one hit on their yeah, head. Yeah, quite. And they're done. Yeah. But to be fair, I do like the mechanics of the new breakpoint. It does look good. Like, ninja mode and everything like this. I like it. And they've always said in the PvP, they're carrying the whole, you know, like, injury system, stamina system, over the yeah. PvE. Nice. So, you've you got get to be... injured in the PvP, you've got to take time to heal. Now, yeah, there's some people that aren't very happy about towards the end of the round. A zone comes in, like in Fortnite, and, um, all right. PUBG. Interesting. But that's a, it, you know, like you get some players for a bit more, try to be more like passive aggressive, if that makes sense. 
Yeah. Right, so try and force those gunfights. Yeah, quiet. Because if you have everyone hiding with sniper rifles with the phone camo system... Oh, yeah. It's just like, what's the point? You, uh, uh, you, you're never going to fucking find them. Yeah, quiet. You have arrived. Uh, uh, excuse me. Now, another thing that they've actually already gone ahead and confirmed Ooh. is they're going to be adding new islands as post-launch content. Because obviously it's not a real world location. Yeah, so it's that'd a, be interesting. Their own fabricated location. And you can actually already see them on the map when you're playing the game. They're just misted out. Oh, yeah. So right. you can you can kind of get the same like idea of how I think it's going to be. Province-wise, it same shares the same amount of provinces, I believe, as Wildlands. Hmm. But some of them do feel a bit more empty because the whole island's under martial law. So most yeah. of the citizens are either in their houses and staying out of everyone's way, or have tried to flee and probably died. Yeah, so uh, now this is gonna be one of the big points. Say you get a really nice stat wise say let's say a body armor vest. Safe drive. But it looks ugly as fuck. Yeah. There's something now called the skin override where you can go into your customized menu and mm -hmm. set what clothes you want, what like color variation you want. Yeah. And then that'll override all the gear you've got so it won't be visible. Nice. So if you want to go around in a full set of I don't know whether they're gonna include it, let's say just for random shenanigans pink or purple color in clothing, 100 yards you can totally right. do that that's right if you, if you want to run down with a blind right. helmet you can <laughs> happy days so they've gone a bit more open with the customization yeah that's it that's how you want it i believe there's Four class types at launch. In Probably 100 yards, shot turn two, right. Which mainly deals with DMRs and sniper rifles. Mm -hmm. In 50 yards, turn and right. And when, you know, shall we say, uh, when their class abilities fills, they can put three round, three very special high capacity or high damage bullets into a va into a mag and yeah. load it in. Yeah. Which. I'm with you. I believe, do not quote me, if I'm still being, if, it, if you're still recording, do no, not quote fine. me, but I believe it can kill the Juggernauts the right. with one hit per head. Can kill what, sorry? You know the Juggernauts for supporting the miniguns? Yes. Guns? Mm. If it does, that would be amazing, but yeah, I'm not holding my breath. Then, you've got your Assault class. Which does, you know, more open run gun style combat. And their class item is a toxic gas grenade. Which yeah. you can use, you know, to do crowd control in a certain area. So say <laughs> you want to lock down a corridor, just throw that in there. You've blocked that corridor for how long it lasts. Yeah. Then your medic, he can you know revive people faster carry your a down a dead body or down player faster mm. and has a portable deployable med kit yeah the panther we've already gone over with the you know bomb you know where they've got panther drop. from right not off the top of my head splinter cell blacklist i thought it seemed familiar yeah. Just straight up, as soon as I saw the Panther class, I was like, 
instantly knew, right, that's going to be in between a recon and an assaulter. That'll be from uh, Blacklist. Um, so, yeah, that's where they've got Panther from. Um, so they've essentially they've gone back to blacklist as such in terms of classes and stuff, which isn't too bad, I suppose. But blacklist had assaulter, um, panther, and I believe stealth, and then um, for straight. PVE, and then PVP. You obviously had like spies versus uh, on. spies versus agents, I believe it was called, or something like that. Yeah, I believe so. Um, but they had like different classes as well, like your agents had. Um, like you had like a tank as such, or you had a sharpshooter, I think. Then st uh, your spies had uh, a disruptor class um, and something else. Like you had various different classes from Blacklist. Um, that was a good game when I was playing that, actually. Really good game. So, so among how they had the Ghost War in Wildlands. Yeah. Okay. I haven't actually done. I've never played PvP on Wildlands, so I wouldn't know. It's a bit of a fuck fest, to be honest. Yeah, I was going to say I'm mostly PvE kind of player. Up, yeah, you've got everyone just throwing up fucking. Drones left, right, and sending you basically permanently marked. Yeah, it's just like for fuck's sakes. At which point you might as well just start running and gunning if you're permanently marked. Just gotta play smart with how you do it. Well, the way they've changed up the ghost wall for Bay Point is you no longer start with a drone. No. You have to find one. Right, and loot okay. it in the world. Yeah. Obviously, they're still able to be shot down. And once it's gone, it's gone. But there is a surveillance system that can be hacked. However, it leaves the person doing the hacking extremely exposed. Yeah. So you'd have to do a buddy-buddy system on that? Yeah. Like, one covering with sniper rifle to try and see whether snipers are hiding. Yeah, quite. Right, I think after this job I'm actually going to get some food because I'm starting to get very hungry. So, yeah. Hi, Red Hill. Hey, Red Hill. Uh, just let you know, mate, I'm just recording some ETS 2 at the minute. Oh, shit. Wow. Nah, it's all about that ATS, I'm sorry. I'll hit up some ATS with you at some point if you want. Do some yeah. truckers MP. At the minute, right, I'm, I have got a 45 ton payload on an HCT trailer in Finland using a 750 horsepower Volvo, but I've only got 6 speed gearbox. <laughs> and, I'll, and it's a manual, so it is very challenging. Like, had it been for the fact that this is 750 horsepower, I genuinely don't think this thing would be getting up to speed quite like it does. And I'm just grateful that it's got a shitload of torque in the engine as well. <laughs> but yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this thing climbs hills when it comes to it. <clears throat> Never recorded any ATS wash. Really? No. Mm -hmm. I just played the FV2, but I, I usually never record it anymore. Nothing interesting really happens. It's not really active like you. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, ATS... Like, Truckers MP for ATS... I've, uh, to be fair, I find there's actually... They are better... Um, they're better drivers on ATS than ETS. But I think that's down oh, to also cool. the pop... Like, the population of it, ETS2 is like... You're getting... 3,000, 4,000 players on a server, whereas ATS, you're lucky to get 500. At um, max, by the way. Yeah, exactly. But uh, that's why I prefer ATS to uh, ETS multiplayer.
I will tell you though, I remember that day that they had the uh that um event for ATS, holy shit it got Oh yeah, it got busy didn't it? Yeah, I the saw the stream button, on that. It, it took me almost six hours, in real life hours, to start and get less than Continue like 30 miles. Jesus Christ. And I had a steering wheel with the clutch and everything. I was like, oh, I got nice. off. I was like, I went to bed. It it felt like I actually went to and went to work. <laughs> Here, Red Hill, out of interest, do you have the SKR SKRS shifter as well, or do you not bother with that? Maybe. Well, because I'm thinking, of, I am genuinely Maybe thinking of get it, getting it, um, but I'm kind of sort of pros and conning it right now. So if you can shed some light on it, please hit me up. Let me know. It, it's decent. It's really, honestly, it's one of the best ones out there. I would trust that one over any of them. Okay. The thing, though, is it does get kind of iffy. Say again. You're coming in and out, mate. It, yeah, I'm on my cell phone. I'm, like, I'm too lazy to get out of bed. Fez. Uh, no, it, it's a really good shifter. Don't get me wrong, but sometimes it just it gets really, really iffy with that keep left and then with the what only do factors because like even Hang on, whoa, whoa, whoa. with the what it gets really iffy with what in but the yards, shifter itself uh-huh uh first problem is if you don't shift through all the gears correctly it's not like an eight shifter where it'll just skip a gear the game will actually recognize it and just literally you will die in the middle of wherever you are the truck will just die out and you have right. to go all the way back to neutral put it in first and get back up there that's a so it's not like a normal h shifter that ats will recognize b you have your highs you have your lows oh that's not so a problem for me mate oh all right I well, some people don't understand it yeah no genuinely i was a truck driver i've been a truck driver irl so like obviously that's in the UK as such, but I get the uh, I get the ideology or the theory behind splitters and ranges and all that sort of stuff. No, oh, thank God. <laughs> so I yeah, mean, don't worry, you don't have to explain yeah. that that to me. But yeah, because like at the minute I've got a G27 um, set up, but I don't have the SKRS or a similar sort of setup to it. And it's like, I kind of really want one, um, because at the minute I figure, well, if anything, if I'm only going to be using six gears, then I might as well make it realistic and only use six gears in game, because otherwise it's, it's just going to be a massive pain in the ass for me having to go up a load of gears, then at, press a button on the G27 console, which doesn't feel realistic, and I don't really know which button's which in terms of which one does the splitter and which one does the ranges, and it's just like, it just feel <laughs> ultimately it's a solution, and I'm lucky that actually, if anything, the G27 has the buttons console to the gear stick, but at, in the same token, it feels gross. <laughs> Is the yeah, best it way is. I can it, describe it's really it. It's just like no, actually. Yeah, it's just like no. I don't like this. <laughs> um, but yeah. yeah, I put it on my two ninety. It, it, it's a lot better. I like it. Yeah. Sometimes it does get a pain in the ass though, because it seems like a lot more work. Yeah. Especially when you're playing with, uh, if you're playing an ETS with it, holy sh! Your arm yeah. will get tired. Well, this is the thing, cause um, I'm looking at make like I've got I've just recently got a new computer, but I'm looking at doing a couple of new setups as well, or a new setup design straight on. for my desk and stuff. I'm thinking of purchasing an extra desk, get some real estate. Oh, please, this truck's gonna pull out on me. I can see it now. Oh, he didn't. Wow. Um, I'm thinking of basically getting another desk to um like spread out the real estate, if you will, of my setup 
But I'm mm -hmm. going to turn it into one of those enclosed uh, L-shaped desk setups. So I can do decent streaming and stuff without really people seeing, you know, my bedroom layout as well. Like, don't get me wrong, I don't have a messy bedroom as such, but it's at the same time, it's like, if the lighting's wrong, because I've got two windows behind me, then it's just like, oh, this is fucking up the light and everything. Um, so there's that. Oh, Jesus, I'm straying. But it's like, also, if I could set up an L-shaped desk, then I could have one desk which is purely just a screen for my computer's performance, stream stats, stuff like that, you know? Um, but, yeah, so that's why, that's what my thinking is. And then I have another desk, which is gaming screens and main, you know, the main meat and potatoes of it. Mm -hmm. um, the other one is, if you have three screens for ATS, it's... Say again. Continue straight if you on. have three screens for ATS or ATS, it's beautiful. Yeah, no, I've heard. I'm not keen on that. I would much rather just get an extra wide screen so then I don't have that broken bit of the... Uh, where it's like you get the uh, edge of each screen. I'd much rather just have an unbroken image which I could work with. Oh god, here we go. Hill climb. Hill climb time. And drop it in low gear a lot. Well, this is the thing. I've only got six gears. And I'm hauling 45 tons because I'm on a double trailer. Full of logs. I'll be surprised if you don't end up rolling down that. Oh, I, I made it uphill. Don't worry. It's not my first rodeo, pal. <laughs> and it, to be fair, it wasn't even that high of a hill climb, to be fair. Or steep, rather. But yeah, because this is the thing, like, you'll get a straight six gearbox as such, straight six. I can't believe I just described a gearbox in relation to a V, oh sorry, a straight six engine. Oh Jesus. Um, but it's like, um, you'll get like six gear set up on the gearbox um, on like your rigid trucks which can do up to 18 tons total and it, it won't be a problem. Um, and then you've got Arctics, which are usually 12 speed. Like, I personally don't know of a articulated truck that uses a 6 speed gearbox um, for general, your general 44 ton haulage type stuff. No, there's no way. I think you'd have to use at least yeah. a minimum. In 100 like, yards, if, if, if right. a gearbox was even designed for that, the ratios would have to be through the floor and then through the roof on the upper scale. So, All right. Yards, yeah, right. it would just be nuts. Um, but it's like ha actually driving a six-speed articulated truck you here is just like ending route. It, it's there's no way. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's gross, but at the same time doing challenges like this where it is actually very challenging and you've got to feather the clutch and all sorts to maintain momentum and all that it's actually really fun as well <laughs> i'm not even kidding either it's actually a shed load of fun i would never use six gears i wouldn't even use 10 13 i'll float through all of them yeah i'd, I'd much oh, rather I enjoy do I the 18s enjoy yeah, I'd All much right, rather do the 18 speed on ATS. Hey, oh, Bradstock. Hey, Bradstock. Hey, uh, I'm gonna send you guys a video. It's starting at a certain time. Just, just, just watch from where I'm sending it. This is fucking gold. Okay. <laughs> Bear in mind, people got paid to write this. Why do you have to yawn? Yeah, Bradstock, oh, chill, sorry. dude. Sorry. Sorry. I'm literally recording a YouTube episode or YouTube video for ETS2 right now. <laughs> like, goddamn, dude. Pretty much just burst everyone's eardrums, you prick. <laughs> no, you. No, you. Yeah, okay, what, what, what timeline am I supposed to go to here so I know? Uh, go to 11.50. Jesus. 
right guys that's gonna wrap it up for uh, the video hope you enjoyed it and i will see you on the next one feel free to check out my instagram at village 55 for all the updates and then there's going to be um obviously twitch streams and stuff like that coming out in the near future so yeah check it out guys and uh yeah have a good one take care yeah, yeah.